through two yoga poses you can do to help with the derotation of your rib hump. So before I get started, I just want to point out that if you have structural scoliosis, your spine is structurally kind of stuck in this curved and rotated position. So although we can do things to help it, we're never going to be able to 100% completely fix it. So I just want to point that out first. But we can definitely make it better. We can definitely reduce the rib hump, but we just, we're not going to be able to fix it 100%. But yeah, it is what it is. We're here, we're working, we're doing our best. It's also important to know what is the rib hump? How does it form? Why do we have it? <laughs> it is basically the rotation of your ribs. So as you have scoliosis and you have a curvature in your spine, your spine will obviously curve to the side, which is why you might lean one way a little bit more than the other. And at the same time, your rib cage is rotating. So I have right thoracic left lumbar scoliosis. My rib, my upper back is coming to the right and my rib cage is rotating clockwise. <laughs> So my left ribs are kind of coming forward and my right ribs are pushing back, which is why I have a right convexity, a right rib hump where my ribs are poking out. It's not muscle, it's ribs that are making that, that arch in the back. And then at the same time, on this left side, it's flat and it's compressed and it's pushing forward. It's making my left ribs poke out more here and these ribs kind of become flat because this is rotated forward and this is pulled back. So when we're working on derotating the rib hump, basically what we're trying to do is the opposite. So we want to push this side back and this side forward. Again, that's for my scoliosis. If you have different scoliosis, you're going to be working on different sides. But this is why it's so important to understand your curves and what you need. But obviously I'm going to be teaching this for my scoliosis. And we're going to do two things. I'm going to try and keep it nice and simple and quick for you guys. If you enjoy what I'm sharing with you today, please like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Tell me what else you want me to make for you and I will get on it. So let's get started. You're going to need a couple of blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can use pillows or something. Just to, or books, books are good. Just to elevate your hands a little bit. So we're going to start with a puppy pose. You might want to grab a stool or a bench. That'll be for the next one, not for this one, but it's handy to have it close by. So for a puppy pose, we want to start on all fours. And you're going to push your hips back slightly so that your hips are roughly 50% 50, 50 of the way through your shins. So between your knee and your um, toes. So basically what we want to do is get traction first. We always want to lengthen our spine. So you can take your blocks out in front. And then basically you're going to push your hips back and reach your arms forward. So this is creating traction along the spine and you're trying to get your spine as straight as possible. We're not rounding into the back, we're not arching, we're trying to keep the, the spine nice and long. So you can play around here with my right thoracic left lumbar scoliosis. I might like to push my left arm forward slightly more than my right because this is going to help open up the left concave ribs. Then when it comes to trying to derotate the ribs, if I actually take this block and put it away, keeping my left hand higher, and then really squeeze my right rib hump and push up through my left side. So now I'm derotating my thoracic spine. I need to be aware of my lumbar because my lumbar curve is going the opposite way. So I really want to try and keep my hips level and not rotating the hips. We're just going through the thoracic at the moment. So this is one way. You can also take your the arm of your convex side of the thoracic and bring it out like this. So this helps to flatten that shoulder blade kind of on the rib hump. And then reach this left side or your concave side forward and actively try and derotate. So I can push kind of through my right hand, push through my left hand to try and push the upper left back 
ribs up towards the ceiling and pull my right ribs down. And then you're going to use your breath. So you're going to focus your breath into your concavity. For me, that is my left ribs. I also have concave and convex down here, but we're just focusing on the rib cage for now because that's where the main rib hump is if you have a thoracic curve. So you can hold this for 10 deep breaths and every breath that you're trying to focus on opening and breathing into the back of your concave ribs. That's going to help with the derotation of your rib hump. You also want to get lots of length through your spine and just play around. You might not, you might not feel it straight away, but this is why consistency and practice is really, really important. <laughs> so get practicing, get consistent, ask me if you have any questions. Then we're going to come to your stool or maybe a chair. If you don't have very good hamstring flexibility, I would recommend a chair with a back. I'm going to keep one block handy. So from here, basically you can have your hands onto the back of a chair or onto the stool. So we're in a, in a forward fold. You can have a bend in your knees. You're trying to get length through your spine again. So we're getting that traction where I'm reaching my hips back, but taking my arms forward, getting length through my spine. And I want to keep my ribs up, not letting them sink down towards the mat. You want to keep this nice and tight, your shoulders away from your ears. And again, you can maybe start to think about walking the concave side hand forward a little bit to help open up into the ribs. You can use a block and make this hand slightly higher. Then you can push through this left hand to help push this side up and then pull the right side down if you have right thoracic left lumbar. And then use your breath again to breathe back into those ribs squeezing the muscles in your convexity. So actively trying to pull all those little muscles together that are all spread apart by that rib hump. You want to engage them and squeeze them. Good, keeping your spine nice and long and straight. You don't want to have any pain in the lower back. If you do have lower back pain with that one, I would recommend just staying down on the floor doing your puppy pose, or you can also do it in a child's pose as well. Oh, now we're going on to actually another exercise. So you could do it like this. If you get lower back pain, same kind of thing. You want to get length in your spine. You can play around with the heights of your blocks. You always want to have this concave side up higher because you want your convex side to dip down and derotate. So this is another way that you can do it. Really hope that that helps and it kind of gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that you can do to help with your rib hump, with the derotation, because it is complicated and it's a lot more than just reaching one arm up like this. Um, it's actually, we've really got to actually actively derotate the rib cage. It's a lot with your breath as well. Please don't try this if you have no idea what's your convex and concave side because you can actually make it worse if you're pushing into the wrong sides. So know your spine, ask me if you have any questions, I'm always happy to help and I will see you soon. Look after yourself, stay fit, stay healthy and stay strong. We have got this scoliosis warriors. I will speak to you soon, goodbye.